thank you, Father, that you told us to come boldly before your throne, that, Father, we would always find help in a time of need, that you're our helper, comforter, standby, our friend, God the Holy Spirit with us, resident in us, spirit within, spirit upon. Father, you're amazing. You set it all up for success. There's not one part of it, Father, can fail. That you uphold everything by the power of your word. And that, Father, you watch over that word to perform it. Your angels, Father, hearken unto your voice and are busying themselves right now, Father, on behalf of your plan and behalf of your family. And I thank you, Father, those ministering servants of yours, ministering to us, your saints, on behalf of your will and your purpose. Tonight, one more time, we just thank you, Father, for the awesome privilege of being able to come and to bow, Father, our hearts in your presence and to know that nothing can separate us, not one thing can separate us from your love, neither heights nor depth, principality or power, that, Father, we are seated in Christ. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Simbri amamaranan zuropor in the amayanan ostorene. Simbri amamaraman turovor in the amamaraman azulamamaranan de Simbri amana na yano ni amana Tongri amamri amana yosu Tongri amamara mana yamamara no Simbri amamri amara mani amamara no ni Stombora mani amana Stumbly a mama lana and I a His beautiful presence is in this place. Simbria mamma man and the amolio. Sublia mamma mana sulapo. Lambria mamma mana sulamamra mani and amranto do framano sulopatrano. Come on, family, let's lift our voices tonight. Sing in the spirit. Come on, sing out of that place. I got a word from the Lord this afternoon. Get ready for the leap. And then I had to remember that this was a leap year. 
And then I had to go looking, what does leap actually mean? And leap means jump or spring a long way to great heights or with great force. A forceful jump or a quick movement. So we declare it tonight, get ready for the leap. In the name of Jesus. A jump, a spring, a long way, a great height and a great force. I declare something of a great force is working among us in the name of Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands and begin to pray into that right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, a great leap, a great leap, a forceful jump, a quick movement, something quick, something quick. Manjola paprapadazola mambrapadazola paprainishtiai. Maojenemi antene amarana. Something powerful. Oh, you need a man. Somebody a man, a moron, and a man. Oh, si papa ba ma si a pal. Mo she le bem le bi a stola mana tapra manaya. Mo je la man je la papa pa da stola mana. Come on, that draggy feeling is leaving. That draggy feeling, that feeling of just dragginess, it's leaving in the name of Jesus. Amen, come on, the scripture says, we'll run through a trip and leap over a wall. In the name of Jesus, things that opposed, things that came against, things that stood against, in the name of Jesus, cannot hold on, cannot operate. Why? Because the leap is in process. In the name of Jesus. Sibri mi asto la mancha la papra banaios. Psalm 18, 28 to 30. For you will cause my lamp to be lighted and to shine. The Lord my God illumines my darkness. For by you I can run through a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tested and tried. And he is a shield to all those who take refuge and put their trust in him. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for the leap of your life in the name of Jesus. We speak it over millennial. We speak it over this assignment in the name of Jesus. Get ready, millennial. In the name of Jesus, the message translation says, suddenly, God, you will floodlight my life. I'm blazing with glory, God's glory. I smash the bands of marauders. I vault the highest fences. What a God, his road stretches out straight and smooth. Every God direction is road tested. Everyone who runs towards him will make it. Shut it out, I'm making it. <laughs> You can shout louder than that in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it out. We're making it. One person said this, one who gains strength by overcoming obstacles possesses the only strength which can overcome adversity. We have this strength within us. Malachi 4.2, but unto you who revere and worshipfully fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, in his beams, and you shall go forth and gamble like calves, released from the stall and leap for joy. Amen. I'm just declaring over somebody, you're about to leap with joy. Oh, I'm going to say it again, you're about to leap with joy. You may have felt that there's a thousand tons against you. You may have felt like there's armies against you. You may have felt like everyone's against you, but I'm telling you, there is a breaking. 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 Get ready for the deluge, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for the breaking forth of many waters. The Living Bible says this, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves led out of the pasture. The voice says springing forth from the stalls like calves in open pasture. 
Charles Stott said this, Christ wants not nibblers of the possible, but grabbers of the impossible. By faith in the omnipotence, fidelity, and the wisdom of the almighty Savior who gives the commands. Is there a wall in our path? By God, we will leap over it. Are there lions and scorpions in our way? We will trample them underfoot. Does a mountain bar our progress saying, be thy cast into the sea? We will march on, soldiers of Jesus. We will never surrender. <laughs> I said, soldiers of Jesus, we will never surrender. In Isaiah 35, verses five and six, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert and the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. There is a bursting forth, ladies and gentlemen, that's taking place. I want you for the next two minutes to lift your hands and praise the Lord like you believe something is happening. Come on, lift up your voices right now. Something in your life, something in your physical, something in your finances, something in your relationships, something in the great plan of Almighty God happening for each and every one of us. The restrictions, the confinement, the containment. In the name of Jesus, there's a bursting. In Jesus' precious name, not only is there a bursting forth of many waters, but there's a new wineskin that is coming coming to many in the name of Jesus because that of the old cannot be used from this day into the Notorosten, in Del from Ashtonaya, and for that to come in the name of Jesus. Come on, this put on a new wineskin tonight. This put on a new wineskin for the season. This put on a new wineskin for the leaping forth in Jesus' precious name. Come on, there's a surge, a surge is happening. Strike Strength is rising. In Luke 6, 24, blessed, happy with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, apart from your outward condition and to be envied. And you, when people despise and hate you, and when they exclude and excommunicate you as disreputable, and revile and denounce you and defame and cast you out, and spurn your name as evil on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and be glad at such a time, and exult and leap for joy. I'm telling you, if you can tonight, I know you're on a slope, but I would like somebody at least to leap right now. Just somebody leap. Just leap. Just leap. Amen. A prophetic move. Just leap. It's a prophetic. It's a prophetic. Oh, I sense it in the spirit. Something powerful. Something. Rejoice and be glad at such a time. And exult and leap for joy. For behold. Your reward is rich and great and strong and intense and abundant in heaven, for even so their forefathers treated the prophets. When people hate you, when they exclude you, this is the voice and insult you and write you off as evil on the account of the Son of Man, you are blessed. When these things happen, rejoice, jump for joy. Then you have a great re reward in heaven. Come on. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to stop looking around to see who agrees. Amen. You have the word of the Lord burning in your belly. It doesn't matter what's happening on the left and on the right. As long as you have Jesus in your sight, as long as there's a joy in your belly that cannot be stolen from you, great strength will be able to be produced through you. The enemy wants you to lie down, wants to kick you to the curb. But that's why we have to leap. That's why we have to jump. That's why we have to lunge for Forward. In the name of Jesus, that's why we have to receive this overcoming, conquering force of heaven in the name of Jesus that causes us to stand in the face of adversity. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you that you are overcomers. You are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus. Matthew Henry said this, it is more to honor 
and the honor of a Christian by faith to overcome the world than by monastical vows to retreat from it. More for the honor of Christ to serve him in the city than to serve him in the cell. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things at times will try to happen to you in this world that makes you want to retreat makes you want to become reclusive, makes you want to just, you know what? There's no, it's, there's no point. What's the use? What's the purpose? When things are being spoken to you like that, you have to understand that it is not yourself. It's a power of darkness. It is an evilness that is coming to get you to move out and to forfeit your place, to forfeit your position. When it makes you feel like you have nothing to add, that you are insignificant, makes you feel insecure and brings inferiority with it. It is a darkness, it is a spirit, it is an evilness that comes to eradicate you and to get you out but I tell you in the name of Jesus amen you're not drawn back you're leaping forward amen you're not getting out you're staying in with a firm grip you have a hold of the vision in the name of Jesus if you believe that shout a big amen Acts 3 7 and 9 says this then he took hold of the man's right hand and with the firm grip and raised him up and at once his feet and ankle bones became strong and steady and leaping forth he stood and began to walk and he went into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising god and all the people saw him walking about and praising god it is time ladies and gentlemen to get up a man from that which has tried to paralyze us you see sometimes people think that it's just physical but there are spirits that are at work that want to paralyze you spiritually they try to bring stalemate. They try to get on one side, the other side, another side, and they try to bring stalemate, stalemate in your mind, accusations, all of these words, these words of insignificance, these words that want to come. You're never gonna do it. You're never gonna make it. It's never gonna happen. You might as well give up. You might as well just go. You might as well do, do something else. This is not really for you. But to only have those things spoken by darkness, you have to understand what was said by light. In a couple of minutes, I'm gonna remind you of what was said over 23, because I don't believe that there's a Sharpie pen that it stops at the beginning of a year and it ends at a year. I believe that these things continue on and the Spirit of God wants us to know these things. And other ministers said this, people united in pursuit of a righteous cause are unstoppable. I'm telling you what God is doing here is unstoppable. I'm going to declare it again. What God is doing here is unstoppable. I'm going to say it one more time. What God is doing here is unstoppable. Now lift your hands, begin to pray in the spirit, strong, fervent prayers in the name of Jesus. Come on, let your voice be heard. Don't be mushy. Come on, strong prayers. Let the strong prayers, let the fervent, heartfelt prayers of a righteous, come on team, this play. Righteous prayers, amen. Pray prophetically in the name of Jesus. Meet my intensity. In the name of Jesus, meet my intensity. In Zila Mashal of Angela Caparamana Shama, Mangela Parsi, in Vers Cavaramia Stala Mahakanani, in Vel Salabaru, Yabers Caversa Mahaya, in El Shola Mahal, in El Canasiros, Mojala Mahana, Simbria Mahana. So say this with me, we leap now. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, leap now. <laughs> I know you want to sit, but just give me a couple more minutes. Hallelujah. If you could pain in your body, get free from it right now. Get free from it right now. Get free from it right now. Any discomfort in your body, get free from it right now. 
Any sickness in your body, get free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, anything in your back that is wrong, get free from it right now. Any stenosis of any sort, get free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, come on everybody. Tell the devil you're not messing around anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're just not going to mess around anymore. I'm not messing around anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. You played nice too long, but Mr. Nice has disappeared. Amen. I'm telling you the strength of God is rising within you. And you're not going to lie down to this anymore in Jesus' precious name. Financially, you're coming up back on top in the name of Jesus. Physically, you're coming on back up on top. Relationally, you're coming on back on top. Say this with me. I believe this is my appointed time to leap forward in the name of Jesus. I leap past all distractions in the name of Jesus. Let my steps be turned into leaps. Shout it out again. Let my steps be turned into leaps. At 5.30 this morning, 5.45, I was going through these confessions. I had no idea that the Lord was trying to say something to me. I was so focused on this morning's message. And I was going through these confessions. I was thinking, man, these are powerful. These are powerful. And yet it was this afternoon when the Lord ministered to me and said, this is a leap year and there is a great leaping forth. And I remembered at 5.30, 5.45 this morning, I'm in these leaping confessions. I jump over every wall set up by the enemy. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear that one. Every obstacle, get out of my way. Even if you can't move it, jump over it. I will try it over here. Even if you can't move it, jump over it. No obstruction is going to stand before you in 2024. In the name of Jesus, come on. Walls of division are coming down. In the name of Jesus, spirits of separation, spirits of isolation, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Spirits, reclusive spirits, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Spirits of intimidation, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Spirits of manipulation, we bind you. In the name of Jesus, I leap ahead of anyone or anything that has illegally jumped ahead of me. At every place of my life that is lame, leap now. <laughs> I saw Cindy do a little leap there. Anything that is lame in my life, leap now. Anything that is lame in my life, leap now. Oh, come on, somebody just, uh, just give a little leap. Just do a little leap. Just do a little leap. every chain. We lay aside every weight. We lay aside all doubt, unbelief in the name of Jesus. We leap from our past into our future. God is with me. He encourages me, causes me to leap forward. The kingdom of God is advancing in my city, in the city of Tulsa with leaps and bounds. My timing and purpose is realigned this year, right now, in Jesus' name. And I declare this, the way is open for me and I will leap into it in the name of Jesus. I repent of passivity. I repent 
of lasciviousness. I repent in the name of Jesus. Of always thinking it's somebody else's fault. Of some thinking it's always somebody else's issue. Of thinking that it's always somebody else that should be doing this, that, and the other thing. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. This year, by the name and in the power of that name, by the power of the Spirit, the risen Savior living in the inside of you this Easter, I'm telling you there is resurrection power that is available. Amen. Do not, do not, do not let go of this moment in the name of Jesus and do not go to la maza. la papri bisa la mara to forma. Yesa la angela ayas sapor siaya. And so, Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory. To you be magnified, to you be glorified. My life is and will continue to be fruitful. I will not be vain or vexed. I will enjoy this life that God has blessed me with. And I refuse to live under oppression, suppression, in Jesus' precious name of things that are out of my control. The Holy Spirit comes to my aid. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, we bind and rebuke anything operating against us. In the name of Jesus, anything. We will not be tormented. We will not be tortured. We will not be terrorized. In the name of Jesus. And why I'm just saying that, we just lift up the blood over Tulsa, over this great state of Oklahoma, over the United States of America. We take authority over terrorism in the name of Jesus. We take authority over anything that the enemy would try to do. Amen. By the bullet or by the bomb. In Jesus' precious name, we sleep in our beds safely at night. Our children go to school safely. We travel about our city safely. We go to restaurants safely. We go to concerts safely. We go to the cinema safely. We go to church safely. Come on, are there any people in this room tonight? In the name of Jesus, we lift up the covering shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. The angel of the Lord surrounds me and delivers me. Because of Christ, I am free, and whom the Son sets free. <laughs> I do not put my trust in man. I do not put my trust in flesh. I put my trust in the ever-living God. I live by faith, and I walk by faith, and I do not walk by sight. I am responsible for my decisions and my choices, and I make a decision to choose life. I choose the blessings, and I choose the Word of God. I choose wholeness. I have faith to speak to mountains, and they obey me. My heart will never depart from the Lord. I will always serve God in the power of His Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the prosperity that I am experiencing, and I continue to flourish because I live in the days of the Messiah. I will have prosperity and great success because of God's grace in the name of Jesus. The favor of God surrounds me as a shield and lasts for a lifetime, not for an evening. Let every Jericho wall fall through my praise as I lift my voice as a trumpet in Jesus' precious name. Let every demonic stump be removed from my life in Jesus' name. I speak to every stubborn demon. You have no will to remain. Your will is broken and you must submit to the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost working in my life. The anointing is increasing and increasing in my life through prayer and by fasting and every stubborn yoke is being destroyed. Shout it out. Every yoke is being destroyed right now. Come on one more time. Every yoke is being destroyed. One more time. Every yoke is being destroyed in Jesus' precious name. Let every evil mountain hear the voice of the Lord through me according to Micah 6 verse 2, and be removed. You know what to do, mountain. You tell your mountains, you know what to do. Get out of my road in the name of Jesus. You know what to do, mountain. Get out of my road in the name of Jesus. 
I thresh every mountain according to Isaiah 41, 15, and I beat them small and I make the hills of chaff. Every mountain in my way will become plain, Zechariah 4, verse 12. I declare that I, like Enoch, have a testimony that I please God through my faith. And because of my faith, I am pleasing to God, and he will reward me because I seek him, and I am diligent at that seeking. By faith, I will sojourn in the land of promise. I decree and declare that by faith I will walk through any trial on dry ground and my enemies will be drowned around me. I will subdue kingdoms, rain down righteousness, obtain promises and stop the mouths of lions because of my faith. I declare that I will not only receive a good testimony of faithfulness but I will also receive all that God has promised. I am established and anointed by God because you have anointed me, I have faith and do not doubt that I can speak to illness, curse it at the root and cause it to dry up and die just as you did to the fig tree in the name of Jesus. I see through the eyes of faith the promise of things afar off. I am persuaded of their reality. I embrace them knowing that I am a stranger and a pilgrim on this earth. I will stand firm and not waver. I will come boldly before God asking in faith. I will not suffer in this life because I have faith and a good conscience and I thank my God that the testing of my faith produces patience to wait for your word to manifest in my life and I hold the mystery of faith with a pure conscience and I declare that my faith works together with my works and by my works my faith is made perfect and my prayer the prayer of faith the prayer of faith and I will see the sick saved and the sick raised up if you believe it shout a big amen come on give him a shout Hallelujah. Well, we've done more in one hour, two minutes than what most churches do in three weeks. Not being cheesy, just telling you the truth. You may take your seats. Brother Copeland said in 2023, what will 23 be like? Lots of change, enormous amounts of changing. Lots of disturbances that are in the nation now will begin to be ironed out during the year because of the major decisions that the Supreme Court has made. Once the Supreme Court here makes it, God makes it, he makes it right and turns it around. There are things, ladies and gentlemen, that are behind the scenes that are being worked out that we haven't seen yet. So don't be moved by the narrative. Can I have a big amen? Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, great things are taking place. Oh, praise the Lord. You're sounding like you mean it. Do it one more time. Great things are taking place. Then we had uh, Cindy Jacobs, who brought in what the prophets said about last year. Even in March 2024, it is tremendous reading to see what the Spirit of God actually said. Goshen. The Lord has spoken to us that he is going to help us each establish ourselves as a Goshen. Goshen was the land given to the children of Israel when Joseph was the prime minister in effect of Egypt. It was the choice land. This land provided for them during the lean years of famine. There are some lean years ahead, and God will reveal to us how to establish our Goshens for the days ahead. There was an admonition given not to let the enemy feed our fears, but to trust in God for our well-being. I take authority over anything that is trying to feed fear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we are to trust in God for our well-being. How this is to take place will vary. Some will plant gardens. Getting out of debt is important. Others will physically relocate to areas where a Goshen is already established. Still others will stay and establish their Goshen in the midst of great darkness. There will be cities of refuge that will be Goshen's and experience supernatural prosperity. I believe we are one of them. There are already in the process of forming now. Psalm 23 will be a very significant scripture passage, and we know that. uh, The Lord is my shepherd. Praise the Lord. A time of fruitfulness and bounty. 
Businesses that have struggled will have their breakthrough. Bounty in the hands of God's children will be a sign and a wonder to many. This bounty is not just for personal security and safety, but to eradicate poverty and misery in others. Isaiah 60 was, was key. This chapter is thematic as to what God is doing worldwide and especially in Israel. Gross darkness will encompass the earth, but the glory of God will shine out of the midst. Provisions are coming for God's people. We were given the analogy that the camels are coming with all we need for our financial harvests. Isaiah 60 verse 6, as the body of Christ drinks deeply of the word of God, revelation will flow to show direction we need to take in our lives. A cursory knowledge of scripture, of the milk of the word, will not be enough to release you into what God wants you to do. Amen. What are we working at here at Millennial? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's definitely not milk. Praise God. Hallelujah. World War III. World War III is going to take place in the future. The word of the Lord was that it can still be delayed. Prayer teams had already independently planned to go to Taiwan and Wales to the school that Reese Howells founded to pray about war. They have also subsequently gone to uh, Israel to pray against a war started by Iran. When was this given? This went out, well, this came to me on December the 30th, 2022. Now look at it. Look what's in Israel. Look what's happening in the nations. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, again, over 10 years, the Lord showed us an alliance of Russia, China, and Iran would form as an axis uh, power in a war. Already this has formed or in many different levels and we continue to pray against this alliance that would embroil the world into a horrible war. Uh, during the future world war, the harvest will still take place, although many of the potential harvesters uh, will, could fall in battlefields. The billion soul harvest will still happen, although a great cost will be paid as a result of war. The war will go nuclear, although it will not affect the whole world with its destruction. A word also given about a fight around the North Pole, potentially uh, from space, all of those wonderful things, and then the global reset. While the world had declared a global, global reset, God himself is resetting the world for a great end time harvest. The Isaiah 19 highway of holiness is forming right before our eyes. This was hastened by the Abraham Accords. There is indeed a highway from Egypt, Assyria, and Israel. Many missionaries are going forth to this significant Middle East region. Prayer gatherings are taking place all over the world. Regions and revivals are breaking out. Can I have a big amen? amen. I declare that revival is breaking out in the United States of America. Amen. Revival is breaking out in Oklahoma. Revival is breaking out, praise the Lord, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I'm just part going through here. Divine recovery. This is the season of recovering all. Where did you hear that before? As God's divinely intervenes. Remember the Lord spoke to us, uh, the word rest, R-E-S-T, recover every single thing. Uh, intervenes to restore lost finances, property, relationships, and other seemingly impossible situations. Then goes on to say demonstrations of power. We are on the eve of the greatest demonstration. Can I move to my headset, please? Uh, we are on the eve of the greatest demonstration of God's power on the earth. This is what he's uh, being called the saints movement, where ordinary Christians do extraordinary things. This power demonstration will capture the news and make headlines. Persecutions will rise against these moves of God and the leaders. Don't be surprised by this, but keep persevering in the midst of turmoil. Satan is going to try and bring divisions and separate close friends, but remain steady in the work of the Lord. Amen. And I see these things. I see these things from different parts of the world. I see these things. The enemy, please do not think that the enemy is kind. I was uh, talking to a couple of people over the last couple of days, and I was telling them this. What the church really has to understand is the enemy does not come with a tight, shiny, black lycra suit or red suit with a pitchfork and a pointy tail with horns. He comes masquerading as an angel of light. In other words, he will use 
what appears to be right to attack you. Well, I want you to lift your hand and say, I will not fall to that. And I will not be part of that. In the name of Jesus. You know, I've said to people for years, it is so important that you get to know my heart, understand my heart. Because if there's anything that the enemy loves to do, and I'm, just not, I'm not talking about millennial, I'm talking about the church. If the enemy loves to do is to hit the shepherd, scatter the sheep. You have to understand that against your shepherd, against your pastor, there seems to be, you know, I'm talking globally, the church, the ecclesia, there is this onslaught of attack that constantly wars. That's why, you know, I, I can sense at times, you know, different things. That's why we have a tremendous, you know, working of, working of prayer, even around myself, around Pastor Karn and myself. Because it wards, stands off, stays the hand of the enemy. These things are so important. See, if the enemy can in any way hit, you see, that's why what the enemy loves to do is to take somebody that's offended. And then they get a group that are offended. And, and what that happens, it's not offense just for the sake of being offended. It's not hurt for the sake of being hurt. It actually becomes a weapon. People become weaponized by the enemy. How many people understand what I'm saying? They become weaponized. Instead of viewing me sorting it out, we allow the separation. So therefore, in that, the offense is solidified. And it becomes a weapon against well, I declare in the name of Jesus that any weapons formed against you shall not prosper. Amen. It's impossible for a man or a woman to live on this earth of 70 to 120 years and not do good for somebody. On the other hand also, it's impossible for a man or a woman to live on this earth 70 to 100 year, 120 years and not once possibly offend somebody. So therefore, you, not, you take that up. You notch that up into people of position. It's impossible to please everybody. How many people understand it? You think in the business world, people that have businesses. It's impossible to please everybody. It's impossible to please the whole workforce. It's impossible to please every... It's just impossible. But that's where you have to stand irresolute. That's where you have to stand in a firm knowing that what I'm doing is God. You know, I say this. If there are people in your life that are intentionally trying to hurt you, they shouldn't be in your life. If there are people in your life that are intentionally trying to hurt you, t intentionally trying to deceive you, intentionally trying to do one over you, then they shouldn't be in your life. How I many people receive this? Sometimes we, we have people in our lives because we're, we're trying to reach them. But if they won't allow themselves to be reached, then that too has a shelf life. How many people understand that? If, I'm not trying to get into anything. I'm just trying to say that you have to know in whom you believe and know what God is capable of and what the enemy is capable of. And as the Lord was ministering to me this week, he says, Paul, I'm telling you, people have to really work with me to bring those things in the unseen into the seen because there's so much that is happening in the unseen now. So much happening that people need to see. They need to see it. But we have the authority. We have the tongue of faith to call those things that be not as though they were to see these things in manifestation ladies and gentlemen offense will kill you it'll eat away at you it'll eat away at you and there's nothing worse than to get around people 
a group of people that are offended. It doesn't even have to be offended at the same thing. They don't even have to be offended at the same thing. They're just offended. And they will tell you that they're not, but they are. Because birds of a feather flock together. Always. I don't want to be, I, I want to be with faith. Amen. I want to be with reality. Amen. I, I don't mean to hurt you, but if something I have said hurts you, you know, my father and my mother through the years, they said a few things that hurt my feelings. But my father didn't repent because he knew I needed to hear it. True or false? So to change your life by how you feel is really you being led around life with a gold ring in your nose by the devil because you change everything by how it feels, how it seems, how it is. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, that's not me in the name of Jesus, because I'm led by the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, any believers in here tonight? Come on, shout it out. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I, I, come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm bigger than that. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I said all that to say this, is the enemy masquerades as an angel of light. He's not coming to you with evil, an evil sign. I am evil and I am here to do evil. That sounded like a really bad Dalek <laughs> for all those Doctor Who people. Come on, lift your hand and say, I'm going to make it no matter what. You know what I've been shouting? We've come this far. Look at your neighbor and say, all the way, baby, in the name of Jesus. Your children need to go all the way. Your grandchildren need to go all the way. Amen. You need to stay the course so that your children can arc back into the plan and the purpose of God. We don't make decisions based on what our children want and what our children like. And I mean that respectfully to all the children. But you're the adult. <laughs> this church went a little Presbyterian there. <laughs> this season is the season of recovering all. The demonstrations of power are going to step up. Seemingly small moves of God will grow big. Seemingly small moves of God will grow big. Like what happened in the Welsh revival under Evan Roberts. We will be surprised and delighted at the hot spots of revival here and there. There will be, everybody say, there will be. Amen. Renewed interest in the history of revival as a new generation cries out for God to do it again. Instantaneous healings will take place and will come like the lightning of God. People will be delivered from mental illnesses, addictions to drugs and pornography and all manner of terminal illnesses in the name of Jesus. And that's where we lift up, amen, the pr a princess of Wales in the name of Jesus. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this is where this thing has got, it's gone too far. But it's just not happening to the Princess of Wheels. It's happening everywhere. It's happening to so many people in multi-levels, different places. People hot on social media. People so and highly opinionated. It, there, there, there just has never, and I say this with, with, with great um, reverence truly. I, I don't believe there's ever been a time like this where people has, have been so vocal, smearing slandering, accusing. These are devils yes. that are becoming completely and utterly 
the operation through people's lives. They used to be hidden, but they're not hidden anymore. Benson Hosa, when he was asked, you know, a great man of God is with the Lord now and was was phenomenal minister in, in Africa. And he was asked about why don't we have the same demonic activity in the United States of America like we do have in Africa. And he says, oh, demons wear suits in America. <laughs> well, that went down well. Let's move along. <laughs> oh, look what the, the next title is, The Spirit of Offense. Oh, that was just for 23. There is a spirit of offense that has been loosed in the earth. This is not a low level. T- <laughs> Thank you, Lord. This is not a low level type of spirit. It is a very high level. God is working in the hearts and minds of believers to be unoffendable. Lift your hand and say, I am unoffendable. No, I'm telling you, this is for me too. Shout it out again. I am unoffendable. One more time. I am unoffendable. There are testings taking place to see whom God can trust to steward this coming great move of God. And I believe that with all my heart. Even those who feel that they cannot be offended are going to be surprised at the level of offense they are capable of in these coming days. Pride is a stumbling block. It is usually the root of offense. God admonished us that he is purging and testing the prophets first as we are called to steward the fresh word along with other ministries into the earth. Don't be caught in the snare of offense. If you are, quickly repent and do not let yourself be separated from those God is calling you to walk with in a close way. I repent in the name of Jesus. I repent of any offense in the name of Jesus. We received a strong admonition not to get caught up in the war of words. Where did you hear that? Over this last several years, the Lord spoke to me about the incitement of words. Amen. Even this afternoon, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I told Nehemiah to stay on the wall. I did not tell him to go over somewhere else to discuss anything. Remember Sanballat and Tobias? It's amazing. Because I had had said to somebody recently, I said, you know what? Actually, I'll actually come to where you are and we can talk about that. And this afternoon, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me and said, I told you not to do that. I told you to stay on the, world, the, on the wall and that you are not to go to the plain of Ono. Somebody lift a hand and say, I received this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't get this stuff just to give it to you. I live this. I live this. I live this. Now, it's very, very important that, that if you feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, that you don't think that this word is just for you. Well, he was looking at me. He was looking right at me. I, 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 I have no recollection I was looking at you. But if you feel like that, maybe there's something on the backside that you need to fix for the front side. I, I don't know, but it's not me. I am not trying to stare you out. A lot of the time I am completely oblivious. I'm just in the zone. That's it. I, I'm just in the zone. Well, he was looking at me. No, sometimes when I get tired, my eye is lazy and it, it, it wants to veer off a little bit. One eye's on you, the other's still trying to find you. I mean, it's like, so you might get hit with my lazy eye or my good eye. I, I don't know, but I wouldn't, I, I certainly, I certainly, would, I wouldn't be taking anything prophetic from my lazy eye. Are you here tonight? <laughs> I always know when I'm tired because I'm talking to somebody and they're looking behind me to see who it is I'm talking to. It's just that one's on you, the still, other one's still homing in. So, so don't be moved if I'm looking at you. I mean, it, 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 it can mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just can't walk about like this. And anyway, if you are the one I'm talking to, you know it. Reload. (laughs) 
But I don't come out here to correct. I come out here to give the word of the Lord. If correction comes, that's the love of God working through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Are you glad you came to church tonight? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pride is a stumbling block. It is usually the root of offense, and God admonished us that he is purging and testing the prophets first as we are called to steward the fresh word, along with other ministries into the earth. Don't be caught up in the snare of offense. If you are, quickly repent, and do not let yourself be separated from those God has called you to walk with in a close way. We received a strong admonition not to get caught up in the war of words, even though we are right. We should not get into a protective defensive mode where we try to justify ourselves. We have one justifier, and it isn't any of us. You remember the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me several years ago and said that, that really to justify is sin, and that we are not to do that because we have already been justified. The Leviathan spirit is at work and will work with the spirit of offense. It causes your words to be twisted and used out of context. When it works against individuals, you will, uh, you will manifest it by becoming defensive and even belligerent. Don't fall into its snare. I want somebody to take this tonight. You may be watching online. You may be listening to this. It may not be anybody that's in here. But if you've been bitten by this offense, I want you just to get free from it right now in the name of Jesus. Because to get into that defensive thing, defending, defending, like you have to justify defending, this is what this is saying. And we know that, amen, that, that really the effects of this spirit is at work in your life. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just pray in the spirit with me just a couple of minutes. Praise God. Just let that settle in. We repent in the name of Jesus of trying to defend ourselves. In Jesus, come on. Anybody know anybody that's ever been impacted by these things? Praise the Lord. I know you don't want to put up your hands tonight, but every one of us could. In Jesus' precious name, glory to God. Glory to God. So I started that by saying it's important that you know the heart. Yes. Amen. Somebody can come along and say, well, the heart is deceitful above all. No, that's not what I'm talking about. It's important that you understand. It's important that you know. That's why I tell people, get to know me. You say, well, I can't do that, Pastor. I'm never around you. But you can by the Spirit. You can see. You can see. I don't know of anybody in my circle that doesn't want to do good for people. That's a good circle to have. Hallelujah. Simbre amanasto. Hallelujah. The ecclesia. The understanding of the ecclesia is going to cause the local churches to shake off old wine sets and move into seeing the establishment of apostolic centers. Great spiritual authority will come into manifestation, and these centers will become discipleship centers to heal the nations. Revival and reformation will be the theme of the day. The body of Christ will move from the sidelines to the front lines. Ecclesia leaders from many countries will form multinational alliances and respect and esteem each other's strengths. One prophet likened the weaknesses in the nations as soft spots that we need to work together to cover. The ecclesia leaders in nations will celebrate one another and not be in competition. These spirits of competition have led us to uh, have been fed by territorial spirits. And I detest it with a passion in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise the United States of America. There is already an awakening happening in the United States. Many fires are burning bright, including what is being called face down glory, in which people are falling in their faces and weeping before a holy God. Tears water the seeds of harvest. God spoke to us many times from the prophets of various nations about powerful moves where the glory of God would be manifested. The pressure on the church will increase. Further persecution is coming, but there is a remnant arising with great power. There will be pockets of light, even the political sector, and they will be given great power even in the midst of a wicked generation. 
The U.S. is going through a reset meant to shake even its very roots, but God has his righteous remnant through the ecclesia who are going to be able to release godly legislation at state levels. It is now obvious, even as we have prophesied for many years, that there will be sheep and goat states. We declare it over Oklahoma that we are a sheep state in the name of Jesus. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, I believe this is you. I believe that what we've done tonight is you. I believe, Father God, the articulation of your heart has come so very strong and so very precious in this place. And I just thank you, Father, that no evil shall, no evil shall befall us in Jesus' precious name. Father, we glorify you, magnify your holy name. And we give you honor and praise in Jesus' precious name. Say this with me. I believe, I believe that I've heard something tonight, heard something tonight. Of, healing of healing and hope. I set myself, I set myself in, agreement with love, in agreement with love that love is the dominant force in my life. In my life. The, love the love that has been shed abroad in my heart, in my heart by, the by the Holy Spirit. This love is king in Jesus' precious name. Now let's just do it again. I bind every work of Satan in Jesus' precious name. I plead the blood over my mind. I secure the, the helmet of salvation for this week. I secure the breastplate of righteousness. I secure the shoes of peace, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth. You know, scripture says, by the truth, and sell it not. Jeannie Wilkerson said this, that in these days, people would go shopping. What would they be shopping for? They would be shopping for the move of God. There was a couple of precious people in here this morning, friends of Elias and Sophia's. You know, it's in our heart to have Spanish people here but so that we can have translation sets that are working. And we, we have been given great wisdom by another work on how to do this in a, very, in a very affordable way. And this couple were, were here this morning and she said, I, I could hardly translate. I just wept and wept and wept and wept and wept and wept because I haven't been in something like this in over 20 years. see guys this is the truth it's not Pastor Paul every minister that comes in here what do they tell us it's not vanity it's not pride but they offer us a warning before they ever speak they offer a warning don't ever take this <clears throat> for granted You see, we're so used. But yet for a precious couple like this, that hasn't been in anything like this for over 20 years, she could hardly translate to her husband for crying, tears. I asked this lady, would you be able to translate for me? I said, am I too fast? She says, oh no, 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 that's not. I said, is it my accent? Oh, she says, no, that's not it either. She said, it's the anointing. I don't know if I can translate under that anointing because it was impacting her. Lift your hands to the Lord. Please don't ask me to lift my hands one more time. They're antennas. And I love the lifting of hands. I lift my hands up unto your name. I lift my hands up unto your name. My lips shall praise you. Bless you, I will lift up my hands on. 
down to your name. Do you remember that? I lift my hands up unto your name. I lift my hands. Some of you are saying, I'm too young. Do you know some of the songs that some of your favorite people are singing? They've already been around twice before. You know that? They're not you. They're just songs of the Spirit. And they keep reviving them over and over again. And Andrew, I know that you're having trouble singing this song. <laughs> oh, I will lift up my hands. Oh, I lift my hands, yeah. So wonderful, Dawn. Unto your name. And I lift my hands up unto your name. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. One more time. And I lift my hands up unto your name. I lift my hands up unto your name. My lips shall pray. Shout a big amen tonight. He's so wonderful. Let's take our seats and let's give on to the Lord. Oh, Father, we just thank you for tonight. You're so amazing. And you do good things for each and every one of us. You pour out your blessing. Father, we receive your word regarding our finances. And then, Father God, there's a shout in our belly, according to some. 35, let them shout for joy, hallelujah, how many people is going to shout this week a little bit, <laughs> are you sure you're going to shout this week, well it's not really my personality, it's not really my personality either. Don't forget how many people's got Jehovah Shama. You know the most wonderful thing I never got telling you today? You know the wonderful thing about Jehovah Shama? They never leave you. No matter what you do, no matter how ugly you are, no matter how bad you've been, 
God will never leave you. Do you know that when Adam and Eve did what was so terribly wrong, guess who still showed up for his appointment? Who was it that hid? Adam and Eve, it wasn't God. What's our temptation when we do stuff wrong, say things wrong, have arguments? This is not the day to hide. This is the day to know that Jehovah Shama keeps his appointments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. All the glory. <laughs> All the you sound beautiful by faith. <laughs> it's so beautiful. This is how it really sounded. <laughs> but it was beautiful. And the Lord loved it. How many people thank God that the Lord loves our voice? Are you going to bless him with your voice in the morning? Come on, how many people is going to bless him with your praise in the morning? Hallelujah. He'll never say, oh my God, it's them. He'll always say, listen, she's singing to me.